Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Che from Northeastern University. So from the last video, I think we started talking about the problem of um, optimize a, optimizing a function while having an orthogonality constraint. Now today, we're going to see how we can solve this. And a good starting point is normally defining what optimal means. Now with the concept of optimality, um, a useful one that we often use is the second order sufficiency condition. You can think of it this way. I don't think I'm going to go very deep in detail about this, but you can think of it as having the Lagrangian equal to zero. As if you have like a function and you want to find a minimal point, that's the point where the uh, derivative or the gradient is equal to zero. And the second, you want to find the second derivative, right? And if the second derivative is greater than zero, it means it's convex instead of concave. So we're finding a minimum instead of a maximum. This is basically saying the same thing. Now, um, so if we find a solution x where these conditions are met, we have found an optimum point. Now, here is the Lagrangian. So I will assume also that you know what a Lagrange, how to write things in a Lagrangian, uh, at least in the basic format. First, you have the function. You write the function here. And then you have the condition. Here's the equality condition right here, along with its Lagrange multiplier. I know most of you are probably used to seeing Lagrange multiplier as scalars, but over here, lambda is actually a Q by Q matrix as well as X. Now, because I noticed that most people haven't worked with matrix format of Lagrange multipliers, I'm going to explain how I got this. So normally we have like a function such as this with a couple constraints, right? These two constraints. And instead of uh, a matrix, the output of these constraint functions is just a scalar value here as well, scalar. And for Lagrange multiplier, what we do is we put a function here. Right? And then for the for the scale of Lagrange multiplier, second one, we give it another one. And if you have more, you keep adding them. And that's all there is to it with Lagrange multipliers. Now, like I said, we want the gradient. Where was it? Here we go. The gradient of the Lagrange multiplier to be zero. And that is our optimum point. So, so OK, so this is our Lagrangian. Given, let's look at this example. We have x transpose times x. And let's look at a simple example where we x is just equal to two columns, x1, x2, right? A column here, a column here, which means that when we do, when we have x transpose x is equal to identity, this is the same condition as x transpose minus identity is equal to zero. Now, if I were to write this out, right, x transpose times x minus, minus, Identity is equal to zero. Identity and zero is here. Okay, now if I multiply this out, I will get this matrix. Essentially, x1, x1, minus one because of this here. x1, x2, minus zero, which is this one. So if you multiply them out, you get this. And what we actually have um, is uh, we actually have four con conditions. Here is equal to zero. This one is equal to zero. This is equal to zero. So these are the four conditions that came from, came from this. So when we have it in a matrix format, you can actually separate them into, um, you can actually separate them into multiple individual conditions. And at this point, like I showed you before, if you have multiple individual conditions, right, 
you can just set them up each of them with a scalar scalar so that's what i did we have lambda one one lambda one two lambda two one lambda two two each one is just a number and now we can start organizing them together so now this right this symbol here i'm going to call it um it's Hadamar product, but it, think of it as just a element-wise product, which means this is going to multiply by this, this is going to multiply by this. Notice that's, that's all I'm doing. I'm separating them into this is going to multiply by this. And then I have a big sum. So once we multiply it together, I'm going to sum all sum them up. So these two statements are actually identical. You might want to spend a second to uh, study it. Right. And and uh, one one thing I have to point out with Lagrange multipliers, if you have one times two versus two times one, they're actually equal to each other, and therefore the Lagrange multiplier for this and the Lagrange multiplier for this. Is, uh, it's a uh, transpose position is always the same right so so therefore in these two are actually identical in general this implies that if we have this matrix and we're going to call this matrix lambda is e actually equal to lambda transpose it's very interesting so you can have a transpose here you don't need a transpose there doesn't really matter. There is a trick in in the matrix um, operation. You can actually get rid of this and get rid of this, and just turn this into a multiplication by changing this part into a trick. Now you can look this up on the table, or you have memorized. Like I work with so much, I just memorized it. But um, but yes, this is actually equal to this here. Now, at this point, I can separate this back out into, into a two product minus the identity. Of course, I can just represent this as x transpose. This is x as identity, and I'm going to call this lambda. And that is how I got this form as the Lagrange, uh, as the Lagrangian. So now we want to take the derivative of this, OK? Lagrangian goes to take a derivative with respect to x, and we should be getting a zero. So, if we take the derivative, first I'm going to separate out the trace. If we have trace a plus b, this is also equal to trace a plus trace b. Okay? So, notice I separate out the two traces. Once I separate the trace, we want to take the gradient with respect to x. Therefore, you, there's no x here, so this term is disappeared. Now, the gradient of a function is literally just the gradient of a function. And this part, how do you find the derivative of trace of lambda x transpose x? Now, if you're like me, who happen to have done this so much, we memorized it, it is 2. Well, it's not two, it's, um, well, lambda is symmetric. So it's actually x lambda plus lambda transpose. And then this is the same as two x lambda because they're the same thing, which as you can see from here. Now, because lambda is the Lagrange multiplier, it's just a constant that we are trying to find. We can actually bake, bake the two, just put the two in here and just find lambda all together without the two. So this is the same thing. So now we have the condition. This, actually, this right here is the gradient of the Lagrangian. But with the gradient of Lagrangian, like I said, you want to set it to zero, right? We can stop here, but it would be nice if we can get an expression for lambda. And notice that it's actually pretty easy to solve for lambda. We simply move the lambda here, I mean this expression, so they're equal to each other. 
And then I'm going to multiply x here, x here. Like I said before, x transpose x is equal to identity, which means this right here is really just an identity matrix. And you can essentially ignore identity. And like I said before, remember lambda is, e is symmetric, right? So they're symmetric. So I can actually find a transpose of this, and it'll still be the same. So the transpose of this then equals to this. Now we have an expression for lambda as well. So we know what we know what lambda is now known. And we know this. But what if we plug the known lambda into the original function? Right? So where is it? So here it is, right? The original Lagrangian is equal to f of x minus x lambda equal to zero. Now we know lambda, right? It's right here. So I'm going to plug this in f of x minus x gradient of f transpose x is equal to zero. And that is the same as this, this uh, expression here. That a trick and multiply x transpose x. This right here, entity. So, so multiplying that really doesn't change anything except we have x here now, which allows me to pull it out, as you can see here. Now, why do I want to put it in this form? This is because this matrix here has a special name called Cayley transform, which we're going to denote by the capital A. The Kayla transform, I personally don't have not really worked with it, but it has appeared in other, other situations. So, um, and it's, I think it's a um, skew symmetric matrix. So, um, we can actually really simplify how we write the gradient of the Lagrangian by putting this here. So, hmm. Notice that x cannot be x cannot be zero. X must be something else, or else x transpose x doesn't equal uh, or won't be equal to identity. So if we get lucky and a equals to zero, it means that the optimality condition equaling the, the grading of the Lagrangian equaling to zero is satisfied. So if A happened to be zero, you know, that's going to help us. So I also don't want to write this anymore. The gradient of F, this is, takes a long time to write. So I'm going to, from this point on, just write G. So that, that's here and that's here. So the final expression is this. And if this equal to zero, like I said, we've discovered the optimal point. Um, after we have checked this, there's also the second order optimality condition, which um, I'm going to skip because I don't think it really adds too much into it. It's more for theoretical reasons. So I'm going to skip that. And so, yeah, I think that's enough for today. We basically talked about um, how to find how to find the Lagrangian. We found out how to find the, the, the gradient of the Lagrangian and set it to zero. And uh, I think we can't. We uh, talked about the concept of Cayley transform. It's bas basically how we could we get this Cayley transform matrix A. Um, okay. Well, that's enough for today. Thank you. Bye bye.